Uh, hey guys, um, Tony here. It's been a while since I've done one of these uh, Let's Play videos. Um, I don't want I don't want to make this introduction too long, like a like a story time video and all that. But well, I'll, I'll try to make the this introduction short. Um, if you notice anything different, um, it's because I got a new mic now. I finally got one of those uh, de desktop mics. It was a it's a blue yeti logitech mic uh with the the pop filter so what happened uh was so my previous headsets work fine uh including the mic uh auxiliary plug but unfortunately uh and i think it's due to my fault um the the auxiliary port on my computer uh was not working and it's due to because and i think it's because i left the auxiliary uh, plug uh, for my headset in there too long and so uh, I couldn't record this uh, yesterday um, unfortunately well as I was about to report it uh, this uh, little technical uh, mishap happened um, as I'm reporting it's, it's uh, September 30th so a little early for this uh, Halloween special that I'm doing, which is the uh, Gabriel Knight Marathon. But yeah, anyway, um, I got a new mic now, so I'm glad to be back to doing another Let's Play series after my um, three-month hiatus from my last uh, Let's Play video. I'm going to take a break from the Da Vinci Code. Uh, I will get back to that game uh, eventually when I can, but for now, I just want to play other different games that I'm more interested in playing for and i think that's all i have to say so without further ado uh welcome to gabriel knight sins of the fathers um i've been doing a marathon of all three uh gabriel knight games i don't know if i'll be able to finish all of them in time before how before uh the end of october but um if i don't finish any this is like the second or third game on time then um I'll continue it through November. So yeah, let's get to it. soundtrack is really really awesome um so i'm just gonna say this right off the bat i, I highly recommend um the first gabriel knight game uh gabriel knight sins of the fathers uh it's one of my favorite games ever that i've ever played um i beat this game in uh, one sitting and uh, I, of course i cheated a little by resorting through um uh, a video game guide um to figure out some of the places I was stuck in, but, um, but yeah, it's really great, and I highly like recommend it. Um, I think all the games, uh, all the Gabriel Knight games are great, and if you haven't played them, I, I really um, highly recommend them, that you play and check, it, check them out. Um, I think they go by pretty cheap on the... Um, GOG.com right now. I think they go by two dollars right now. Uh, that's how I got the uh, Gabriel Knight two and three on when uh, GOG was doing a sale for its anniversary or something.
here we go. Day one. I dreamt of blood upon the shore, of eyes that spoke of sin. The lake was smooth and deep and black, as was her scent of skin. Mm-hmm. I bet. Just a minute. It lives, I see. Do you want to speak with Lolita? Oops, sorry. That's uh, your little menu there. I'm sorry, but Gabriel is allowed. Oh, I mean, he's out. Yeah, if he ever comes back, I'll tell him. You know, you could do better. I know I don't know you, but you could do better. Sure. Bye-bye. Good morning. The phone's been ringing off the hook all morning. Let me know when you want your messages. Yeah. Gee, you're lively. Did you have another nightmare last night? Sort of. Mm-hmm. I told you it's that voodoo book you're researching. That stuff can seriously screw up your karma. I'm sure that's it. Maybe I should write a horror novel on passive resistance instead. <sighs> so don't sleep. It's your body. Anyway, your handheld tape recorder came today. Really? Great. I can't wait to see what human rights you violate with this one. I can't wait to violate them. For example, if you would just let me... And I located some local voodoo references for you. Dixieland Drugstore and the Historical Museum of Voodoo. Both are right here in French Quarter. How would I ever manage without you? You? Give me a break. The devil himself couldn't change you. Well, if the devil had great legs, perhaps. Like yours. And a riveting personality, I'm sure. Well, if you need any more research done, just ask. It's not as though we're swamped with customers. So, um, I don't remember when I first heard of the Gabriel Knight series. Um, if it's either through, um... Dan from Game Grumps recommending this game. Um, of course, he's a big fan of um, point-and-click games, especially Sierra games uh, like uh, in the Gabriel Knight nice series, um, which uh, Sierra developed, uh, developed and published the Gabriel Knight nice series. Um, so I don't know if I got it from him from... Uh, from Dan from Grain Grubs, or if I stumble upon it all of a sudden, or if I uh, looked it up through Sierra's um, video game catalog in the in the wiki page or something like that. But um, but yeah, I, I think I bought this game a while back, and it's been sitting in my shelf for a year until I played it like recently. I think probably. Probably last month was when I played it, um, and I was re immediately hooked, uh, you know, by the game, you know, with the story and characters and, and everything. And I think the writing is really, really great. Um, but yeah, so what you saw is um, saw earlier is your menu here. So there's a, a score here. It depends on how many. Uh, you probably see throughout when you, throughout the game. So you have a score here that um, um, shows you how much of the game you completed by the amount of tasks you do, um, amount of tasks you did. Um, and here's some like menu stuff over here. Like you can, I think this is to pick him up and then move and then activate and then open or something like that uh, it might get a little confusing especially like which objects go with what but um yeah it, it, it's not too difficult to figure out and then there's your boot to like go somewhere and this to examine stuff and think gabriel is carrying nothing and that's that's your inventory here and this is your Cassette tape, if you want to um, 
and go back and listen to conversations you have with other people if you're I think it's mainly to um, remember where you left off in the game or to remember what they said so you can figure out the puzzles or stuff like that but yeah um, so the, the voice so there is like a narrator in this game um, she, although uh, I mean I'm not sure if she's actually Jamaican or if she's just like an actor who puts on like a Jamaican accent. I'm not too familiar with the, the voice actress who uh, voices a narrator. But I don't know, sometimes I, 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 it sounds a little like Hungarian ish to me or Scandinavian. But anyway, this uh, little masquerade masks thing um unless you examine things so we'll just examine grace your uh, your employee who um who basically like helps you with like giving you info and helps you with like running your uh fairly empty bookstore <laughs> don't mind if i do do what oh nothing handsome isn't he okay <laughs> Um, yeah. It's an ash tree. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of things we could do here right now. Um, let's just examine this uh, painting right here first. Tree snakes in a skull. Gabriel's father painted it. What a wacky, offbeat kind of guy daddy was. So that one's gonna be significant later for a puzzle. I don't want to say too much, but obviously because there's another book a ride around here which will give like a pattern of a three. So so just keep that in mind uh, once we reach that part of the uh, of that puzzle. But anyway, let's pick up some stuff. Uh, I think we can pick up this... Gabriel doesn't need the ashtray. Uh... I don't know if I interact there with is them. nothing to operate there. Okay, so let's not so let's not worry about the ashtray right now. Uh, let's pick up the tweezers here. I'm gonna take the tweezers for a bit. Good. You're beginning to look a little scruffy. Just trying to make you feel at home. Yeah, so you got a point just for that. Um, oh, I think they turned down the speed all of a sudden. Or I think it went back to normal speed, but um, I'm gonna just turn the turner up just in case, so you know, you're not. It doesn't take like too long, like like that. I mean, it's only like, well, like two seconds or something. But um, I'm just I just turn it up the speed a little so it can go along a little faster. Um, but uh, let's save the game. Uh, of course, I deleted the previous saves that I had on here before I started to play through so that it doesn't spoil because it shows a screenshot So yeah, I just deleted those saves and started a new one Mind if I borrow the magnifying glass? No, Sherlock. Just bring it back when we get the next estate shipment. No problem. All right, and we go to the cash it's register. certainly lighting. No, I don't want to Wishful thinking. Okay, not that. Here, maybe... Moving? Gabriel would... Oh, of course, the the open thing. All right. Gabriel opens the cash register to examine the take. Or, in the case of St. George books, the missed take. All right, so there's some stuff here. The cash register contains about... Twenty dollars in small bills and chain. It's a gift certificate left over from yet another dismal failure of a promotion. Okay, right, so we're gonna pick that up. I trust you can live without this old gift certificate. Knock yourself out. All right, I'm gonna save a little constantly. Let's pick up the speed a little. All right, let's pick up the newspaper here. Times Picohune, dated June 18, 1993. 
the front page has an article about the voodoo murders. The article says that the victims are all identified as members of the underworld. The general public of New Orleans is in no danger. Police claim the so-called voodoo trappings found at the crime scenes are fake, a scare tactic, and that the murders are not associated with any genuine practitioners. Gabriel also scans the Aquarius horoscope for the day. Potential storms ahead. Proceed with caution and do not get involved with anything new at this time. Mm, right. <laughs> yeah, so he always checks the horoscopes and of course he obviously, of course he ignores it. Um, it's, uh, so the narrator and Gabriel Knight, they always say New Orleans uh, or New Orleans or however you pronounce it. Uh, I'll just say New Orleans. Well, I think it's only Gabriel Knight. He, he pronounces it as like one word, like New Orleans or something like that. <laughs> it's weird. But, um, anyway, let's check out some books, I think. Can I examine the jacket? Dramatic, isn't it? Gabriel didn't eat for three weeks after splurging on that coat. <laughs> he has a thing for black leather. Grace's coat is a simple but classic trench coat. Gabriel hates people with good taste. Uh, let's see if we can pick it's up something. It's a bit warm in here. Gabriel just... Uh, Leave my coat alone, Gabriel. Okay, sorry. Um, so there's some books here, so... Let's, yeah, let's check them out. Gabriel leaves through a German-English dictionary. Let's see, mid-tag means midday noon. I think you could keep doing this a bunch of times until you get, like, all the specific words. But it's kind of annoying how you have to pick it up and then to read, like, each, like, random German word. I would, I just, it would have been better if you just pick it up and then you just pick a word to examine or something like this. You don't have to hear the narrating narrator say that you picked up the dictionary. Spiel means game. Interesting. Himmel means heaven. Uh huh. Dry means three. Possessen means possessed. That's handy to know. Drachen means dragons. I wonder if Mosley would know he was being insulted if I called him Drachenbread. All right, so I think that's all the words. So keeping track of, um, keeping my dry in the Draken. Gabriel pulls down a book on snakes. Snakes are legless reptiles. Some snakes kill their prey with poison, some by constriction. A snake smells by tasting the air with its forked tongue. The smells are passed back to a sense organ in the mouth. Constrictor snakes, however, sense their prey by vibration. Hmm. Did you know that medieval legends about dragons and giant worms are actually based on snakes? You know, dragons, devils, sea monsters, well, they've always been associated with snakes. Grace, get alive. Gabriel's had all those books in the bathroom and doesn't care to read them again. Okay. Uh, what about this the one? The history books on... Not that one. What about this one? Yep. Gabriel selects a volume of German poetry that he always found strangely compelling. Drei Drachen. Drei Drachen kriechen in meinen Schlaf. Die Ziele wollen sie lebendig zum Fraß. Feurigen Atems, geschwelltener Zunge, genießen sie jedes Mal. That's nice. Kind of creepy, though. Who's the author? Heinz Ritter. I'm not sure what it says, but I get the feeling the guy was one sick puppy. All right, so keep in mind those two things. Uh, dry dragons, which means, dry dragon, which means uh, three dragons in German. 
So we have the three from the, the painting here and three from the poetry. And also the name uh, Heinz Ritter. That will. If they will will in, took that. Not that way. Uh, that will come into play with, not just with the story, but also with one of the puzzles. These, uh, puzzles that I, uh, that I mentioned. Alright, so there's this room here. A bit of a mess. It's Gabriel's bed. Unmade as usual. The wastebasket overflows with crumpled pages of mediocre glory. The typewriter is beginning to accumulate cobwebs. Should I feel guilty? Nah. It, so, uh, so Gabriel Knight, uh, not only is he the, uh, the owner of the store, but he was, he's also uh, a struggling uh, fictional writer. And um, he, right now, uh, he has an interest in Voodoo Murs because he th uh, thinks it will help him with uh, writing a story. Several dozen books, including a few of Gabriel's novels, occupy the shelves above his desk. So he already has his own uh, books published, but um, again, he's still like struggling, especially like with, uh, you know, with the store. Jeans and t-shirts. Gabriel's bedroom is also his office, his studio, and library. A poster on the wall advertises Mardi Gras, the biggest party of the year in New Orleans. Yeah, she also kind of says New Orleans in uh, as like one word, New Orleans, New Orleans. <laughs> the medicine cabinet contains a few old prescriptions, personal hygiene stuff, and lots of hair products, including some hair gel. Okay, so we're gonna grab the hair gel here. I'll here. take this hair gel. You never know when you'll need a touch up. And we're also gonna grab this uh, flashlight thing here. Uh, some stuff you'll notice that stands out. I might need a flashlight. Uh, there's some items that you can see a little that'll uh, stick out. Um, besides a few things, of course, but there's some like items you can tell that stick out. Uh, especially this telephone, we can. Also used, but we're not going to worry about that later. Gabriel's bed. I already did that. Uh, a little coal bubbly and brie cheese is about all Gabriel's fridge ever has in it. Bills from last Christmas gather dust on the door. Alright, so I think that's everything we can grab here. Uh, I'm not gonna try to like 100% this game. Just, just uh, keep that in mind. So, you know. All right. So I think. So the exclamation point is to like just basically talk to them regularly. Um, and I think this one holds the question mark uh, lets you like ask questions and all that. So, what's new, Grace? Your use of mathematics, for one thing. These books are unbelievable. What can I say? I refuse to be bound by rules. The strap marks on your bedpost speak otherwise. Did I ever tell you that you're actually quite attractive? Be still, my heart. <laughs> I also really like um, the interaction between uh, Grace and Gabriel. Um, it's like really, really, you know, you can tell that they're really, really uh, great friends uh, besides the, you know, their bantering and all. Um, it's really, really great uh, writing and um, character dialogue and interaction. You don't see a lot in uh, modern day writing, unfortunately. All right, let's get to asking her some questions. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Alright, so she says that she has messages for us, so I'll just ask for messages. Do you have messages for me? Dana called, and uh, Susie left a message about a lawsuit. Toss them. Okie dokie. There's more when you want them. Do you have more messages for me? Your grandmother called. 
I keep meaning to get over there. What does she say? Did she sound good? She sounded great, and we had a nice little chat about you. Grace? Don't worry. I didn't go into detail about your cardinal sins. Not that anything about you could surprise her. She adores you anyway. She's my girl. But she said to remind you to stop by and go through your father's things. Hmm. Okay. Alright, so there's something over there that we need that's important for our inventory. So we'll have to go over to um, Grandma Knight's place uh, before we head over to the, uh, the crime scene. Do you have more messages for me? Here's a strange one. You got a call from someone named Wolfgang Ritter. He said he was calling from Germany. He told me it was urgent, maybe you should give him a call. Call Germany? Like hell. If it's really important, he'll call back. Well, fine. Let's just hope he's not with the German lottery for pitiful American authors. Um, so this is something that uh, Dan from Game Rumps mentioned that, um, I'm sure like my dad also told me this, that so back then before uh, WhatsApp was a thing, um, getting calls from uh, overseas, especially in Europe, um, you know, between like America and Europe, it was like really, really expensive. Um, I'm sure it's like ex expensive also for Europeans to call to uh, America and also like from parts of Asia as well. Uh, yeah. Do you have more messages for me? Your friend Detective Mosley called. Talking of visiting. Especially with you. What do you want? He left an interesting message. He told me to tell you that his mother's maiden name is Humphrey. Oh, that's H-U-M-P-H-R-E-Y. Fascinating. And that he left some photos for you at the station. At the front desk. It's about time. Gabriel. Those photos wouldn't have anything to do with the voodoo murders, would they? Now, why would you say something like that? Because I know you. You're getting privileged information, aren't you? Did you tell him you'd put him in your new voodoo book? A writer has certain obligation to his readers, you know. Gabriel, you know you never put him in your book. Your main character is a female orthodontist. You're gonna be reincarnated as a pit bull if you keep screwing with your karma. As long as it's a male pit bull with a really big... That's enough. Thanks. Anyway, that's all the messages. Thank God. Ding, 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 ding. Alright, so... So we can also request research. Or request her to research something, but um, we don't have anything for her to research right now. So let's... Talk about other stuff, like, uh, voodoo. What can you tell me about voodoo? I didn't know much of anything about it. Until you started researching it for your book. Now I know that it's active in the city. There's that shop and museum. It can clearly be dangerous in the wrong hands. You should be careful investigating it. Do you know anything else about voodoo? I've told you all I know. Sorry, I can't be more help. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Just what I read in the paper, same as you. What can you tell me about New Orleans? Well, I've only been here two months, but I love it. It's so much more alive than any place I've been. It feels like anything's possible here. All right, so we can also ask her about herself. Uh, I feel like I should do that so you guys get to know characters and all that some there's some care some uh, characters you'll interact with uh, that won't talk a lot about themselves but for some people you're close to like Grace and Mosley um, uh, you can ask them about it so we'll just ask her tell me about yourself Grace yeah right Knight. I mean it what do you want to know We'll just ask this one for shits and giggles. How come we haven't gone out yet? I'm still waiting around for that lobotomy. As soon as I get it, I'll let you know. How do you like working at St. George's Books? Well, it's not exactly a huge intellectual challenge. Although the math in your record books could confuse Einstein. 
Still, I love old books, and it's a nice way to pay the bills while I explore the city for a summer. If you ever pay me, that is. How old are you? Old enough to know about men like you. Oh, Gaiden. <laughs> what do you do after work? Well, I either go to my oil painting class or my Tai Chi. You know that. You know, you can go overboard with this improving yourself stuff. You don't want to alienate us mere mortals. I suppose I should just allow my mind and body to atrophy. Works for me. Just tell me anything at all. I just got my master's in history and classics. My folks wanted me to go on right away for my PhD, but 18 years of school was enough. I needed a break. Just tell me anything at all. I came to New Orleans because I'd read so much about it and I thought, you know, spending a few months here would clear my head. Just tell me anything at all. I've always wanted to do something really adventurous, you know? Something real life. I'm sick of libraries and lecture halls. Just tell me anything at all. My folks are traditional Japanese. I don't even remember Japan myself. I was three when we came to the States. Just tell me anything at all. I've been studying Tai Chi for ten years. It's a very spiritual discipline. I'm sure discipline of any sort isn't something that would appeal to you, Gabriel. Alright, that's enough of that. Nothing, I guess. Never mind. Suit yourself. Alright, I think that's everything. So let's head out. To, uh, to Grandma Knight's place. I'm out of here. Try not to sell out the store while I'm gone. Have fun. So, yes, yeah, so both of these we can use to zoom out, so we'll go to Grandmother Nice House. I like how this is kind of like a drawn over of the live action shot. Gabriel, I'm so glad you stopped by. Sorry it's been a while, Grandma. Not at all. Give us a kiss. Now come and sit down. Tell me how you're doing. Alright, we'll just talk to her for a little bit before we get uh, the stuff upstairs. How you been, Gran? Just fine, dear. I'm sorry I bothered you at work. But I was hoping you'd get a chance to go through your father's things in the attic. Don't be silly. You can call me anytime. Nice weather. Oh, Gabriel, please. It's been just awful. Muggiest summer of my life. Underwall are portraits of Gran and Grams when they were young. Gabriel's inherited some good-looking genes. Mostly pictures of Gabriel, his dad, and Harrison Knight. Mostly pictures of... That clock has been in the right family, Granny's family, for centuries. Granny's knitting. She whips through that stuff like there was no tomorrow. Alright, um... I guess we can go upstairs. Um, and then we'll talk to her. I'm going to go up to the attic, Gran. Be careful of the dust. Alright, so here's the notebook. That's something we need for our inventory. I think I'll take Daddy's sketchbook with me. Alright, so let's examine it. Gabriel looks fondly at his father's sketchbook and charcoal pencil. Freaky stuff. <laughs> Images haunt the pages of Philip Knight's sketchbook, the way they must have haunted his mind. The images touch a deep card in Gabriel, 
so familiar are they that he finds it hard to believe they aren't from his own subconscious. Right. Uh, let's examine this thing real quick. An elaborate mechanical clock, probably of German origin, is among the discarded treasures of the attic. It doesn't seem to be running at the moment. Yeah, so that's a puzzle um, that we have to do here. But let's talk to Graham first, and then uh, we'll go back to the clock and uh, you know, kind of further the story along, especially. That's it. Take a load off, hon. Can we talk, Gran? Of course, my boy. How can I help? Uh, yeah, let's ask her about the, uh... We can compliment her. <laughs> but, uh, let's talk about uh, some stuff like this. What can you tell me about voodoo? Voodoo? What an odd question, Gabriel. Of course, you always were interested in monster movies and all that other weird stuff. You get that from your father and granddad. I don't know anything about it, dear. Of course, it was very big in New Orleans at one time, but you don't hear about it so much these days. Too much else in the world to worry about, I guess. What can you tell- I don't know what else- What do you know about the voodoo murders? Gabriel, nothing. And I don't want to. I sometimes wonder what this world is coming to. What can you tell me about New Orleans? New Orleans is very southern. Of course, though, not as much as it used to be when I was a girl. It's gotten much more influenced by the East Coast and that California stuff. Still, it hasn't changed as much as other places, I reckon. We've always been happy here. That California shit out of here. Uh, let's talk about the knife family. Tell me about our family. Who would you like to hear about? Your granddad, your father, or your mother? Let's talk about, uh, so Harrison and I, I think, is the granddad, so let's talk about his parents first. Tell me about my father. Your father was my only child. How we are adored him. Philip suffered from terrible nightmares, just like your granddad did. They were two peas in a pod. Tell me about my father. When Philip met your mother, it was love at first sight. They were married two weeks later. Never looked at a girl seriously until then. And he looked at plenty. You have your father's way with women, Gabriel. And your granddad's. <laughs> oh. Tell me about my father. I wanted to just lay down and die when he and your mother were killed in that car crash when you were only eight. It was the thought of taking care of you that kept me going, Gabriel. The police say your father swerved off the road after being frightened by something. Perhaps a deer in the road or a wild cat. Tell me about my father. Your granddad wanted Philip to have a normal life. He was obsessed by that thought. He pushed Philip to go to law school. But Philip was driven to art. He painted almost in a daze. He would get so inside himself when he worked. Tell me about my father. He always hated it that it was Margaret's money that supported the three of you when his painting couldn't. I kept telling him. Try something more cheerful, like a landscape or two. But he couldn't do it. His work was just too dark and disturbing for the public, you know. Tell me about my mother. Your mother was Margaret Templeton when your father met her. She came from a very wealthy Creole family in New Orleans. She was beautiful and reckless. She was madly in love with your father, of course. But I also think she liked defying her family. Tell me about my mother. Your mother's family refused to give her money after the marriage. All she had left was a modest trust fund from her great aunt, who happened to like Philip. The remainder of your mother's trust fund became yours when she died. That's what you used to open your bookshop. Tell me about my mother. 
The Templetons are all gone now. Every last one of them. They never wanted anything to do with us, of course. What a waste. Let's talk about ourselves and then we'll talk about Grant. Tell me about yourself. Me? Oh, surely you have something more interesting to talk about. Oh, come on, Gran. All right, dear. What do you want to hear? What do you do all day? You know how I love to knit and work in my garden. I also take long walks. It's the only way to keep an old body like mine from stiffening up. You're not old. Oh, don't be foolish. I'm older than the hills. Tell me how you met Grand Eddie. I met Harrison at a church revival. There was a traveling preacher back then, a big fella named Reverend Jim. I even remember his slogan, Come to me to find your way. Your granddad was sitting right behind me and my girlfriend Alma, and at one point, old Reverend Jim was flinging his hair around with his fire and brimstone annex, and a piece of it, one of those small add-on dues for man, went flying off. I swear, Harrison and I were the only ones that noticed. We both started laughing to beat the band. Everyone looked at us like we were a couple of loonies. It was then I knew that he was for me. Tell me about before you met Granddaddy. Well, you know I was born Rebecca Wright. My daddy owned a lot of land outside of town. We grew peas, corn, cotton, all kinds of things. It was a good childhood, but my father was very strict. He didn't much let me out of his sight. Yes, all these are kind of, most of them are kind of optional, but there are a few tidbits that they say, that the characters say they'll help bring like those points up and also help like with getting info and also to progress like the storyline and all. So. Most of these are optional, but there's like some that'll help with like cracking up the not well not just the points, but most importantly like just getting important info. You know. How you feeling these days? Fit as a fiddle, and don't you worry your head about it. Just tell me anything at all. I had your father when I was 22. The doctors told me I couldn't have any more after him, so I'm afraid I spoiled him rotten. Just tell me anything at all. I never loved any man but your grandfather. And I never will. Just tell me anything at all. I hate to admit it, but I was a jealous little thing when your granddad and I were younger. I loved him so ferociously. And he did attract the eyes of the ladies, whether he wanted to or not. Just tell me anything at all. I get lonely sometimes. But I have lots of girlfriends in the neighborhood. I call one of them if I'm feeling blue. Just tell me anything at all. I wish you'd settle down and give me a great-grandchild. Oh, Gran. Just tell me anything at all. I had your father when I was twenty. Oh no. All right, dear. Tell me something about Granddad. Your granddad immigrated to America when he was twenty-one. He worked his way through school, met and married me, and we had your father, Philip. Since you're so interested in family history these days, why don't you go by St. Louis Cemetery Number One and visit the family tomb? It would be a sweet gesture. Maybe I will. Yeah, so the cemetery is also one of the places we can visit. So we got important info there that Harrison and I um, immigrated to America. So it's something to keep in mind. Tell me something about Granddad. Your Granddad supported me and your father with bookkeeping. I'll tell you what, though. He hated every minute of it. Didn't really like bookkeeping one bit. Maybe that was why he had the worst luck with jobs. Oh, the nights he'd come home afraid to tell me he'd lost another. <laughs> and I would tell him. It didn't matter to me. But he felt ashamed, Gabriel. 
Tell me something about Grandad. Harrison was only 36 when he died. Your father was eight years old at the time. Your granddad was hit by a streetcar in the business district. Took me nearly a year to believe he was really gone. I'm sorry, Gran. I know you are, dear. Yes, we got a little bit of a uh, repeated history here. Is that, so Harrison and I died when Philip was A. And also Philip and his uh, and his wife died when Gabriel was like eight. So very very strange going on here especially with um, Gabriel and his life and his uh, family uh, at least on uh, Harrison's side tell me something about granddad did you know that your granddad was a poet he was he wrote the most beautiful poetry for me when we were courting I always thought he should have done something with that gift but he was such a practical man didn't believe in chasing after dreams Tell me something about Grandad. I don't know what else. Alright, so I think that's it. So let's go up into the attic again. I'm going up to the attic again. Enjoy yourself, dear. A ring of six symbols surround the face of the clock. A sword. A sun. An angel. A noose. An eclipse. And a dragon. Alright, so if you remember the, the three sinks with the skull and uh, the poem, uh, three dry draken or three dragons uh, has uh, some relation with this puzzle here so what we're gonna do is uh, move the dragon here and I always hate it how like this thing well now it's, I'm getting the hang of it right now but it was always acting well fucking well it's acting funny right now whenever I try to move this thing and especially the hands of the clock so let's put the Dragon on top here because I think that will trigger the mechanism and then the face of the clock No, not like that like the face Here we go, so we're just gonna get to Okay, that's already at the Come on Come on yeah, I just hate how it Fighting with me and shit. I don't know what's up with that. No. The face of. I don't like that, goddammit. There we go. Alright, so we, the dragon's on top and there's a. Uh, hands are at uh, 3 o'clock. So now, we turn this thing. The key. Granddaddy, you old fox. And here we go. So. It looks like examined up. The photo, probably at least 50 years old, shows two young men standing with an older man outside the castle. I wonder who they are. All right, let's pick them up. There's uh, the photo, and then there's a letter. So let's just exit, and then we'll examine them in our inventory. The old photo... The old photograph show Gabriel's grandfather with two other men that Gabriel has not identified. The letter is addressed to Heinz Ritter, whoever that is. The letter is written in German. But Gabriel determines what he can about it. It was sent from a place called Schloss Ritter in Rittersburg, West Germany. The letter is addressed to mein Sohn Heinz and signed Wilhelm Ritter. One of the reoccurring words strewn throughout the letter is the word Schattenjäger. The only thing that Gabriel can decipher about the letter 
is a sense of urgency in the handwriting and in the heavy use of quill tip bold strokes and underlining. All right, so now let's ask Grandma Knight about this uh, Heinz Ritter guy, or Hans Ritter guy, and uh, the connection with uh, the uh, Knight family, or, or specifically Harrison Knight. Have you ever heard of a Schottenjäger? Schottenjäger? Schottenjäger! How odd, Gabriel. I haven't heard that word in years. My goodness, you've given me a chill. Your granddad used to say that sometimes in his sleep. Really? Do you know what it means? No, I'm afraid not. I asked him about it once. I don't think he answered me. Odd. Hmm. Thanks, Gran. Do you know anyone named Heinz Ritter? Heinz Ritter? Oh, Gabriel, where did you hear that name? I found a letter in Granddaddy's clock. I promised I'd never tell you or your father, but I suppose it doesn't matter now. Tell me, Gran. Your granddad's name was Heinz Ritter before he came to America. He changed it to Harrison Knight legally when he arrived. Why did Granddad change his name? I don't know. I tried to ask him about his family, his life before America, but he didn't want to talk about it. He never even told me about his name change. I found out one day when I saw his passport in a drawer. Since he obviously found it painful, I never questioned him about it. But I'm sure it wasn't trouble with the law. Your Granddad was the best man I ever knew. Didn't Granddad ever say anything about his past or his family? Only that his family was crazy and that he never wanted to see them again. He believed in some family curse, thought that he could spare Philip and Philip's children from what he called old nightmares. Whatever Harrison wanted to spare you, though, it cost him plenty. He never did sleep well, and he would often get a faraway guilty look in his eyes. He was wrestling with something he thought he should be doing. Some place he thought he ought to be. I don't know how he could think that he should be anywhere but with me and our child. It's a terrible way to live. Do you know anything else about Heinz Ritter? I've told you all I know about your granddad's past. All right, um, we might come back here, but I don't remember, so let's just exit. Well, Gran, I better get going. All right, dear. Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He's out at a crime scene. Sorry. Where is the crime scene? Is it related to the voodoo murders? Crime scene information is police confidential. We don't need any more looky-loos than are probably already there. I was supposed to pick up some photos from Detective Mosley at the front desk. Is that right? And who are you? My name is Knight. Gabriel Knight. Yeah. I got something for you, all right? As soon as you're done talking, I'll give it to you. What is this guy's problem? <laughs> Here's that envelope for you, Gabriel Knight. Thanks. Yeah, so if we keep trying to press him further, he's still not going to give us the info. So, uh, 
We'll just save it real quick and then we'll examine the pamphlet. Or let's, let's open it. Gabriel opens the manila envelope and finds two photographs. The photo of Mosley reads, Cop Nerd, to Gabriel's eyes. The photograph of Mosley was apparently taken upon his graduation from the police academy. He, he had hair then. Ooh. One of the photos from Mosley is an official voodoo murders crime scene shot. A graphic close-up of a victim. One of the four. I guess that's it. Um, so we can't get info from this guy, so we'll have to get info elsewhere. It's an antique umbrella stand. go to and it kind of like typical like kind of weird Sierra fashion is like some weird uh, puzzle solving kind of stuff but um, so it's not like a too grounded kind of game I mean it's not like as silly as like say like Leisure Suit Larry or uh, the King's Quest games but it's still kind of grounded well, yeah, it's mostly grounded, but it's just this one part. It's a little weird. A police officer is either off duty or patrolling the park, or both. Jackson Square is a good place to rest while exploring the French Quarter, and a great place to be entertained by local performers. Ambulance Alright, so there's um, a radio there, so um, and obviously we can't reach it with uh, this uh, patrol officer here, so we're just going to have to look around. Okay, so you want to attract this mime and bring him to the officer, of course you can't let him uh, interact with the other Well, I here. never! Leave me alone, you! You, you man! Yeah, so, so, if they, um, if they touch any of the other visitors, then, um, they kind of follow them, and then you have to start all over with them in that screen. So, let's just hope he doesn't run into anybody. Oh, we're, we're doing this. Go. What are you doing? Oh, God, stupid mime. You white face. Homicide team attempt. Yeah, it's, this took me like five times before I was able to get the, the mime to distract the uh, police officer there. But let's, uh, let's try the other way. Hopefully, without any annoying. Shenanigans. Let's go over here. I don't know that lady. Okay, go here. Oh, and then she's gonna annoy this lady. Why, you nasty thing! take a while oh, I also keep in mind of this drummer guy I'm not saying that <laughs> this is a guy's skin color I'm just saying keep that in mind because uh, he's playing the drums and um, so it's, a little, it's uh, it'll come become a lot more significant later in the uh, storyline hey cut that out I told you to stop that. All right, mister. You want some of this? All right, now we can 
pick up the Gabriel radio. likes his own cycle much better. Okay, not that. Uh, let's do this. There we go. Gabriel picks up the headset and listens. Ambulance 91, have you located the crime scene? They've radioed for you three times. Damn! Did you say it was north of the Lake Retreat Country Club? South. Lakeside Drive, north of Piedmont Pier, south of the Country Club. Man, I don't know if it's the clouds out here today or what. Good thing this guy's already dead. Everyone's having trouble. Must have been hallucinogens in the coffee this morning. It's just so misty out here or something. Uh, hey, I see a squad car. Got it, Molly. Thank God. Have a good one, 91. Interesting. Stupid man. Hey, you! Get away from that bike! Sorry. A lone drummer beats out a haunting rhythm on a large African drum. Alright, let's head out. To the, uh, crime scene. The crime scene team is still at the site. Gabriel parks a bit out of the way and walks over to avoid adding to the general confusion. Mostly. Huh? <sighs> Night, you wiener. I told you not to call me that. Feeling jumpy. Who, me? Don't be stupid. How'd you find me? Oh, I was just driving by. Mm-hmm. Well, for the book. But don't tell anyone I let you see this, huh? It's another one. As you can see, same M.O. and no frickin' clues. We're still waiting on an ID for the body. That's disgusting. Isn't this a rather, uh, public area for this kind of thing? Yeah, they're frickin' ghosts, these guys. Lakeshore Drive isn't exactly the 10 Expressway, but it is open to the public. No reports and nothing. Now, who the hell is that? Good day, Miss Getty. What's going on, officer? Detective Mosley, ma'am. We've got a little problem here, but nothing for you to be concerned about, Miss Getty. I see. Thank you, detective. And good day, gentlemen. Good day, gentlemen. Whoa, I'm in love. Forget it. That's Molly Getty. She's about as far out of your reach as the moon. Probably on her way to meet some guy with a yacht right now. Near here? The lake's a popular place for country clubs. If she's out here a lot, maybe she saw something or heard something. Man, nobody ever sees or hears nothing. I told you. Besides, you just don't go around bothering people like her. We've about wrapped it up, sir. It's another clean sweep. Yeah, let's get the meat wagon moving, then. Do you want to leave an officer here, sir? Nah. Just leave the tape up for a few days. Yes, sir. If you'll excuse us, sir, we'll take him away. Stick around and take notes for the book if you want. Watch out for the muck in the water moccasins, though. I'll be back in the station. Stop by if you want to go over the case some more. Thanks.
Alright, let's examine the crime scene here. There seems to be a pattern to the lines in the sand. But if there is a pattern, it's smeared. There's only one small area that's clearly defined. Yeah, and that's why um, we need the notebook for this so we can take note of this. Hmm, let me try to get this down. There's a couple of other stuff uh, that you need to take note of this uh, with the notebook. Out, out down the spot. Will these pristine banks ne'er be cleaned again? Gabriel is on the sand and clay shore of Lake Pontchartrain. At the site where some poor bastard got to see who the voodoo murderers really are. The site is now deserted. All right, so we're just gonna pick something up from here. Gabriel cannot see. Uh, not that one. This one hmm. right here. Is that clay? Yeah, don't ask why we're picking up the clay. Uh, Yuck. It'll come in play later. Um. The grass has a matted appearance there. All right, so I'm gonna examine it with the magnifying glass. There are marks in the grass, as though some heavy wire object had been set there. Gabriel is odd. Something small and iridescent is barely visible among the indentations. It looks like a scale of some sort. With magnification, the marks in the, the marks are actually deep indentations in a regular mesh pattern. All right, so we're gonna need the tweezers to pick them up. Gabriel carefully uses the tweezers to take the small iridescent scale. I think it's a snake scale, but it beats the hell out of me. What kind? All right. Uh. That's all we got from the crime scene. Let's head out. Now, uh, where to go next? Uh, let's just head back to the store for now, and uh, we'll just call it a day there. I knew you'd miss me, so I came back. Oh boy, party time. Yeah, so I think like, well, it depends on like the day or whatever, so, oh, there's this guy. Hey kids. Bruno, how nice. Gee, a customer. Of yours, hardly. How's the flower business? Well, better than the used book business, I see. Rare books. That explains why I so rarely see anyone in here. Are you going to sell me that wonderful painting of yours today? Gee, is today the day that hell freezes over? <laughs> One needn't be rude. You'll see, you'll see him again later in the game. But, um, so, as I was saying earlier, uh, before the gay do interrupted, um, there's like specific uh, times. May, some, sometimes when you talk to Grace and Taylor research stuff, that's when the day ends. But, um, but I think on some days also, uh, if you discover everything you need to know on that day then the day ends automatically so there's not some stuff like mainly important stuff anyway or especially items where where you won't miss or there's like a trigger uh, event that you won't miss or anything like that so you know I don't think you have to worry anything about that as far as I'm aware but yeah uh, let's just talk to Grace Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Did 
Do you know anything about snakes? Doing a family tree, Gabriel? Very funny. I mean real snakes. You know, scaly, cold-blooded. I would have thought you'd find them empathetic. Mm-hmm. I know very little about reptiles of any kind and prefer to keep it that way. I think there's a book on snakes around here somewhere, though. Okay, thanks. Could you do some research for me? Sure. What? Could you see what you can find out about a woman named Malia Getty? Hmm. The name Getty sounds familiar. What's your interest in her? Oh, just, you know, stuff about the voodoo murders. If you could get an address... Mm-hmm. They're murders. Right. I'll see what I can find out. Anything else? I can't think of anything. Okay. Well... Oh, it's about closing time. So it is. Good night, Gracie. Good night, Gabriel. And uh, try not to dream, okay?